The public generally welcomes our settlement of the automobile strike. But labor, working men and women throughout the nation are interested in the terms of the settlement. What were they? What was gained? Did the workers win or did they lose? First, those who represented the Committee for Industrial Organization demanded that that organization be recognized as the sole bargaining agency for all the workers in General Motors automobile manufacturing plants. That was refused. They then proposed that they be recognized as the sole bargaining agency in 20 plants. That was refused. They, the representatives of the Committee for Industrial Organization, then abandoned that demand. What then was gained? The situation so far as recognition of that union as the sole bargaining agency remained the same after the strike was over as it did prior to the date on which it was called. Labor suffers generally throughout the nation when any branch of labor is injured. The settlement, therefore, represents a surrender on the part of the representatives of the Committee for Industrial Organization to the demands of the management of General Motors. One great lesson taught as a result of this strike is the need for solidarity, unity, and cooperation on the part of labor throughout the United States and Canada. Had labor been united, had it presented a solid front, had all the force of labor been behind those engaged in the automobile strike, the demands of the workers could have been won completely.